Greetings, viewers. It's been a little bit since I've done an unboxing video, so let's just do one today, shall we? Um, this pen is a D-like Alpha DeMaio, and it, uh, well, I could show you rather than tell you. So uh, here we go. Interesting um, little white, plain white sleeve. We'll take that off, and we have what is a super nice tin with a 3D embossed image of the pen, very, very much like um, uh, Kaveco uh, does for some of its packaging, and uh, the resemblance to uh, Kaveco products does not end here, as uh, we will see. So we open this up, lid comes right off, and what we have here is the pen. And as you can see, it's a really, really nice tortoise shell uh, acrylic material with a clip, and uh, embedded in this foam. And that's it. That's the packaging. Uh, beautiful packaging. Really, really nice packaging for this for this pen. Um, and here we are with the pen. And as you can see, it is a pocket-sized, uh, styled and sized pen. Very, very, very similar to the Kaveco AL Sport. It is just a little bit larger, but otherwise styled almost identically. The slightly larger size. Um, I think uh, is actually significant for a reason which we will see slightly later on in the video, but it has a very, very similar style clip, etc. All in all, very, very similar. See, it's so similar, I actually took the wrong pen off the camera. So it is a very, very similar uh, uh, styled uh, pen. Since this is a pocket pen, it almost doesn't make sense comparing it to full-size pens, but we'll do it anyway just for completeness sake. So here is the Delike pen that we're reviewing today. Here it is, as we saw before, compared to the similar Kaveco AL Sport pen. Um, here it is compared to a Lama Safari, and here it is compared to a Pilot Metris Halton. So you can see it's, it is dramatically uh, smaller than those full-size pens, as it should be because it is a pocket, uh, pocket pen. As I said, super, super nice uh, material, nice functional clip, which can be removed. A lot of people don't like clips on pocket pens. In fact, uh, Kaveco actually makes the clip a, a optional extra, which they actually charge quite a bit for, but uh, not so on this D-like pen. It's, uh, it is included, but you can, you can remove it. It is a screw to uncap, and it takes one and about a half revolutions to unscrew and reveals a small little D-like steel nib. It says D-like, super quality, uh, EF for extra fine, and has a little bit of scroll work. And sort of an ordinary looking plastic feed. Um, it does fill via cartridge converter, and this is where the small additional size over the Kaveco really makes a big difference. This pen takes a full size converter so this is the included converter as you can see it's a style stylistically is very similar to a platinum converter but it is a full size converter compare that to the Caveco which is a little bit smaller pen but as a just as a consequence of that slightly small size you cannot put a full size converter in this pen you either have to use a short standard international cartridge or you have to get yourself one of these Caveco mini converters which is a push pull converter that takes maybe only about half the amount of ink that the full-size converter um, uh, will take. So um, if ink volume is important to you, the small additional size uh, uh, that the Delight has over the Caveco uh, might actually be, be worth it because it does take, uh, like I said, this full-size uh, converter. You could eyedropper this pen. It is all sort of sealed up and all plastic inside. However, um, I wouldn't do it just simply because if it's a pocket pen that you can be carrying around in your pocket, to me, the extra incapacity of eye dropping it is not worth the extra risk if the pen cracks or something like that and then you have uh, an ink catastrophe. So um, uh, I, I uh, would not, I personally wouldn't eye drop for this pen, but uh, it certainly is an option if that's something that is uh, interesting to you. Um, 
One nice thing about this from a stylistic perspective, the section is the same material as the body of the pen. So you have that sort of nice continuity. Uh, it obviously posts and you will need to post this pen because of the, the, the relatively small size and it is quite comfortable when you um, when you post it. Um, but again, it's a pocket pen. You don't want to probably be writing a novel in this pen. It's meant for um, you know sitting in your pocket and taking some uh, quick, quick notes with. Um, but the material, like I said, is really quite attractive. Not sure how it hold up from a durability perspective in if it's rattling on your pocket with keys and chains. So this is this Quebeco is one that I do carry around in my pocket with keys and chains. And this is a uh, adenized aluminum. And uh, although you may think this is the stone washed version of the pen, it isn't. This was um, um, not bought this way. This is just sort of the normal wear and tear from having it for a while in my pocket, which I'm fine with on a pen with this finish. This will probably not look great once it's all scratched up and stuff. So I'm not sure with this particular material if you actually want to be carrying around in a pocket with keys and change. But again, um, your option uh, as well. I do have one uh, additional fact. The, the, what you're watching right now was shot um, a, a bit after the, 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 the main part of this video. But this is sort of a little um, uh, integrated follow-up, if you will. Um, one issue that I had with this pen is it does not seal particularly well. So the nib dries out a little bit and it does get sort of a, it's not a first time every time starting pen, which in my mind is absolutely a crucial feature of a pocket pen. The whole reason you're putting your pen in your pocket is you want to be able to pull it out, write a quick note. If you have to start messing around with a hard starting pen, that negates the entire value of carrying a pen in your pocket. That is why I think the um, this uh, Kaveco AL Sport is ideal as a pocket pen because it has an extraordinarily high degree of first time every time starting reliability. This pen, while an attractive pen and a nice writer, does not have the level of reliability that this pen has. So if you're planning on using this for a sort of traditional use case for a pocket pen where you want to be able to pull it out of your pocket and write a quick note, you may want to reconsider because I didn't. the experience I had um, after using this for a while, um, it was just not really up to that particular task. Of course, your mileage may vary, and I'd be interested in hearing feedback that other users of this pen have in that regard. Thank you. So that's about it for this particular pen. Let's change the camera angle. We're gonna ink it up, and we got a nice brown ink to ink it up with today. We have uh, J. Herban Café des Isles. I cannot pronounce things in French because my knowledge of French is non-existent, but that does mean island coffee in French. So this is a nice brown ink to go with this nice brown pen. And um, let's see how that works out. Okay, we're gonna ink this up, but uh, one thing, the volume of ink in this bottle is kind of low. So this is gonna illustrate why I do, one of the reasons I don't like these J. Herban bottles very much is when you get towards the end here, it becomes quite challenging. You have to kind of tilt it into the corner and stuff like that because it's it's got, uh, it's not the best shaped bottle. So I'm doing sort of the one-handed twist fill technique here. Um, and let's just do that for a third time, make sure our feed is nice and saturated. And I'm going to actually expel some of the ink because we don't need a, a full, full pen here for our testing purposes. And um, there you go. So fills pretty easily, but more importantly, how does it write? And we're about to find that out right now. Okay, folks, what we're writing with here today is a D-like Alpha De Mayo. And this has an extra fine steel nib. And um, this is actually quite smooth for an extra fine. Um, but I will say I don't like extra fine nibs. So um, this is about as nice as uh, an extra fine nib is gonna get in my book, but it's not, it would not be my first choice of a nib. I think it's a little too fine for me. But like I said, for as far as extra fines go, not bad at all. It's not, not too dry. Um, it's definitely uh, pretty smooth and um, it writes uh, quite comfortably. Uh, 
Um, I will say that, um, again, small pen, thin section, etc. This is for jotting quick notes, not for writing a whole novel. Um, but for, like I said, for a pocket pen, etc., uh, it's definitely a nice pen. Although, like I said, I'm more of a fan of a much more rugged type of pen if you're going to actually carry a pen around in your pocket. And that's why I carry this uh, aluminum pen around. Um, but depends on sort of the level of wear and tear that, that you think you're going to give your pocket pen and the likelihood that it might, you might like, you know, sit down and, uh, and break uh, the pen while it's in your pocket or something like that. So um, you do have, I, I personally have that concern, but if that's not a concern of yours, this is actually a very, very nice, much lower cost alternative, costs a, a fraction of the cost of this pen. Um, so that is about it for this pen itself. All in all, a pretty nice pen, positive experience. Let's talk about the ink. So this ink is um, um, J. Herban um, Cafe accent there uh, De Isles with a little thing of jig there. Um, so nice shade of brown has a little bit on the light side does shade a little bit um but it's an interesting color it's a little bit like i said on the lighter shades of brown so j herban makes three different browns that i have they have the cafe de isles they have the coco de brazil and they have the le de te i definitely prefer probably the le de te of those three if i just had to pick one uh check my video out on uh i believe the visconti voyager uh, for uh, more details on the Lay de Te. Um, I'll probably do, maybe I'll do a video in a little bit where I just compare the, 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 the different J. Herban Browns because they, they are kind of interesting to compare to each other. But in any case, um, definitely nice shade of, uh, of brown and uh, definitely worth something to consider. Again, my normal gripe with J. Herban inks apply. These bottles are look good but they're just awful you saw the kind of contortions i had to go through to fill the pen i had to tilt it and all that stuff because it's this sort of short wide um um uh, construction which is just really exactly what you don't want for a bottle of ink but putting that they do look nice i mean see on the desk the nice artwork on the label they're kind of fancy looking so they are nice looking bottles but um as a practical matter they're just not there so in any case um Pretty nice ink, not so great bottle, decent pen this week, all in all, all pretty good. So, there we go. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please subscribe. Please leave a comment. Please give me those thumbs up. Until next time, bye-bye.